First, let's take a look at some common tasks you will need to perform when working with Swing, JFrame, and JAppLet applications in Java. One of the first things you might think of is using a background image for your JFrame or JAppLet interface. To use a background image in NetBeans, add a JLabel, add the background image to the JLabel as an image icon, and then resize the label to be the same size as the JAppLet or JFrame background. All of the other components will then be painted on top of it. For this example, I'm using a game project that I created, a simple RPG game called Pirate Arena. And uh, I just constructed it as a tutorial on how to learn how to use Swing components and implement interfaces and do some of the basic things you need to do to utilize graphical interfaces with JFrame and JAppLet applications. And this technique will work with both as far as implementing a background image. It'll work in a JAppLet or a JFrame. And I have both in this project. So for instance, I start out with a splash page and it's extending JAppLet. And then it loads a JFrame. And the reason I, I made the splash page a JAppLet is I embed it inside of a web page. I'm running this whole game um, from a web page. Okay, and then it turns around and spawns all of these different JFrames that open up. And this is sort of the main game window right here, the main interface. Anyway, if you want to implement a background image, there's not a whole lot you have to do. If you look, this is just a very simple J applet on the splash page here, so a couple of J buttons and three labels. Add yourself a J label. If you're using NetBeans, just drag and drop the J label component and it'll write the code for you. Um, if you're coding this by hand, then you're just going to want to, you know, go ahead and uh, maybe in your globals declare a J label, call it X if you want, um, instantiate it inside maybe the init method. So J label X is equal to new J label whatever properties you wish to assign to it and then once you've done that um, I come down here and then this is where I'm setting the size of the splash page so I just want to take my label and size it exactly the same size as my splash page okay and that's what I'm doing right here and then I'm going to instantiate an image icon call it background image and I'm taking this JPEG here background.jpg and I'm going to use that as the background image and I'm using the methods get class and get resource. This will go find where the class is, and get resource allows you to pull things out of a jar archive. If things are compressed or packed into a jar archive, then you need to use a method or function like get resource, or it won't be able to find a relative path to the image or the sound file or whatever resource you're trying to pull out of the jar archive. And again, this is because all of this runs from a compressed jar file on a web server, and you interface uh, into it through a web page. Okay, so just an image icon and then I'm going to go ahead and set icon on my instance of the image icon and then there's my background image so that's really all I had to do there and here's what it looks like with the JPEG file in the background okay so here's the splash page just a J applet that you can embed in an HTML web page and then from the web page or the J applet you click on launch and then that loads the first J frame sort of the main game window and then there's you know, several other JFrames that load from here, depending on the context of what you're doing in the game. Now that we've taken a look at how to set background images up for JFrame and JAppLet applications, the next thing we might want to look at is how to set the background color. And in this case, you'd want to instantiate or create a color object, and then get the content pane, and then simply call the method set background. To show you what this looks like in several projects, um, after the splash page, Loads. This is the first JFrame that pops up or that it spawns. And here I'm setting the background color right here. And it's an RGB value. So I'm instantiating a new color object, getting the content pane, and just passing the color object in using the function set background. Okay, and that's sort of a, a you know dark blue background there, but again, if you were to take a look at it, I'll launch it from the splash page and sort of you know there's the background and color right there you can see in the applet. And a couple of other examples here. Um, this is a blackjack game. And let's go here. And same thing here. You can see where I'm setting the background image. Um, let me go here. And again, I'm just instantiating a color object. In this case, sort of a greenish background getting the content pane, calling the method set background, passing the color object in. And this is what this looks like. Okay, so sort of a green background. 
and let's see if I have a couple of more items here. Um, same thing here for Mutant Wars. Um, okay. And go through here. All right. And here I'm setting, also setting the foreground color and the background color. This is just another way of doing it. I'm using the this pointer, getting the content pane all in one step, and then setting the background with the color object and the past in as a parameter. Another way to do it, but here's what that would look like. Okay, so it gives me a black background, in this case color black, instead of an RGB value. Just different ways of doing the same thing. Um, let's see, here's another one. You can see All right, this is conspiracy. In this case, I have a white background. And let me go through here. There's are different frames that pop up in the game there from a toolbar menu that I have. But here, here's where I'm actually setting the background color. And then, you know, it's all 255, 255, but that gives me that white background. And again, get content pane, I have to pass it in as an argument. So you're, you know, by now you should be getting the idea of how it works. Um, this is an example of how I would set, you know, I could set color items in an arcade game. Okay. And. And in this case, I'm setting the background color here, and I created a, a pop-up uh, J-frame menu um, so that you can modify and change the color of the background at will here. And you know, doing that, let me pull up menu here. Here's what it looks like in NetBeans. So you can set all the properties and everything, but basically, I can modify the background color, and that just changes the properties and passes it in. So I have all this code here to modify different properties and pass it into the game. But it's the same basic process. I'm just changing the background color. And based on what color they select, in this case from you know a, a combo box, you know, all the drop down uh, options there, then I'll change the background color. And here's what that looks like. Alright, so hit the menu. Here comes the menu, and I'm going to modify the background color. Um, we'll make it the opposite. We'll make it white. And go ahead and click on commit. Okay, so, so I'm just modifying the background color of the applet. Let's say I wanted to do something else. Um, we'll make it green. Or. And whatever color we wanted to make it there. Now let's look at setting the initial size of a J uploader J frame window. To do this, we can use the this pointer and call the set size method passing in a dimension object as a parameter. Note, you can do this in HTML tags with the J applet, but the set size method also works with the J frame, and this way you don't have to resize the J applet in applet viewer every time you test it and debug the application in NetBeans. And here's the method set size in action. And in this case, I'm just setting it to be, you know, variables, and I'm allowing the player to adjust the uh, resolution. They can set it to 640 by 480, 800 by 600, 1024 by 768 by modifying these variables here and then calling the method set size in the init function. And on the splash page here for Pirate Arena, same thing, I'm just using set size 
and I'm passing in a dimension object to set the size of the splash page. Remember like that. And that just sets it to 650 by 560. Now let's take a look at spawning or opening a new JFrame from another JFrame or JApplet. To do this, inside of a function or method in that JApplet or JFrame, build an instance of the JFrame you wish to spawn or open using the new keyword. Then call the method setVisible and pass in the Boolean value true. For example, here I'm in the splash page or the JApplet for Pirate Arena, the Pirate Arena project. And one of my globals is actually uh, an instance I'm going to build of interface, and that's this JFrame here, sort of the, the main JFrame window of the game. Okay, so it's launched from this splash page here. So I have this declared as a global, and if you look down here, I have some J buttons, and one of the J buttons, in this case, if you click on launch, simply calls the method or function main menu. And main menu takes my global up there, and using the new keyword, it instantiates it or builds an instance of interface, which is this JFrame here. And then I call the setVisible method on it, passing in the Boolean value true. And that would cause it to display. And I have another Boolean here called launched, which I use for other things throughout the game. In this case, things like controlling and stopping theme music and uh, closing down JFrames from other objects. To close a JFrame from another JFrame or a JApplet, simply call the dispose method. Again, in our splash page here, I'm calling the dispose method, and this is the event handler for when they click the clip button. So again, I just call dispose after stopping the theme music, so let's take a look at how that works. I'm going to go ahead and launch the splash page. I click launch, it launches the new JFrame. I'll move this over here, and then if I click quit, it closes it. And that's the dispose method.